Book Talk. My name is Buffy Catella. This week I'm joined with Paula Kastner from the Seven Bridge Writers Collaboration. Is that collaborative? Correct? Collaborative, sorry. So we're just going to jump right in, Paula. Can you tell us about how you ended up at Seven Bridge? And because you're a founder, actually. So how did that come about? And yeah, just go ahead. Sure. Well, thanks for having me on today. It's lovely to be here. So Seven Bridge Writers Collaborative was actually birthed about seven years ago. Five writers got together and realized that there's a hole in central mass for writers. I don't know how familiar you are with writing, but writing is a very solitary venture. And so we had a mission to connect and network and support writers in our area. And we also had a secondary mission to be able to provide programming that was either free or not very expensive. Somewhere along the line, the world decided to be a writer. You have to have an MFA or you have to, you know, spend lots of money on writing classes. And we wanted people to realize that everybody could write and that everybody could have access to the tools for writing. So we started offering writing groups and we've been partnering with local libraries because then we can offer space for free. And it's a win-win. People come into the libraries, which is great for the library, and we don't have to pay for space. And it also means that we bring the programming to where the writers are. So we've partnered with the Lancaster Library, the Lemonster Library, the Groton Library, the Worcester Public Library, the Littleton Library, um, and it's been an amazing partnership to be able to, to work with the libraries in Central Mass. And we try to offer a variety of opportunities for writers. So we have weekly creative writing groups that meet in 10-week sessions where writers come and they write, and I tell people it's all about the love. They only get positive feedback about their writing, you know, to kind of banish some of those negative thoughts that they've had about their writing, you know, through well-meaning, but kind of misguided people in their past who've sort of squashed their, their love for writing. We also offer craft workshops monthly craft workshops so that folks can practice in the art of writing, how to write dialogue, how to incorporate setting, how to think about character development. We also offer classes. And the classes do have fees, but they're very reasonable. So we just did an independent publishing tools class that was $50, you know, for um, four hours of information that was extremely useful for folks who are thinking about self-publishing. We also offer open mics. Those that, that's, that's where my heart is. I love the open mics. I have a theater background as well as a writing background. And so the open mics are fun. Everybody comes and they read from their pieces. And it's varied poetry, short stories, flash fiction, chapters from their novels. And it's a really fun time. And it's also a safe place where writers who, especially those who are brand new, can have someone listen and applaud and just be able to feel those accolades for their, their writing. Um, and for folks who are veteran writers, it's just a good place for them to practice before they do a book tour and they have to read their work out loud to strangers. So, um, so that's a lot of fun. And we also do critique groups. So a lot of writers come through our programs where they write in the writing groups they sort of refine and hone through the craft workshops. They share through the open mics. Um, they might take a class or two to better their writing. And then at the critique group, they share their work. And that's where we're a little bit less loving in that it's not just the positive, but we're extremely loving in that we're kind and compassionate when we talk about, well, maybe you should work on this, or maybe this doesn't work the way you think that it will. Um, and then after that, a lot of folks end up getting published. I've been really thrilled that we've had a lot of our writers who have published with magazines, published with small publishing companies, some have done self-publishing, um, and but it's that thrill of knowing that we help them to sort of take those steps and, and reach where they were. And I know recently you had Ray Tatton on who has published a lot of work that he's done through Seven Bridge Writers Collaborative, which just 
is such a thrill to be able to know that that he's doing something that he's extraordinarily gifted at and that we've been able to help him do that. You kind of touched on this, but what type of writing have you done? So you did a musical, you're working on a novel. Have you published, what have you published, I guess? Um, so my background's pretty varied. I started out in children's literature, but haven't actually published any children's books. I did write, produce, and direct a musical because I have a background in theater and I love theater and I've worked for about a decade as a drama director. And one of the things you learn in elementary and middle and high school drama is that there are no plays for elementary, middle and high school students. You know, what they do is they do what they call these Broadway junior versions where they take something that is very adult themed and make it a junior show and just cut out a few songs and, you know, cut out a few scenes. Um, and it's great, but you know, most middle school kids don't want to love a scene. They don't want to kiss anybody. You know, that's not something that they, they want you know and the songs are incredibly hard they don't have the vocal range yet to be able to to sing a song from Les Mis you know and so um, so I at one point decided you know I could do this I, I'm a writer and I have a theater background I could write a play how hard could this be you know? and so, so I, I actually because I love to sing and decided it had to be a musical and also because musicals allow more students to be able to participate because that's the other thing these junior versions they have four roles and everybody else is in chorus and you know no elementary middle and high school student is auditioning to be in chorus they all want a part <laughs> so so you know i wrote a play that had 36 roles in it like speaking roles in it. Um, and I didn't know anything about songwriting, but I have a lovely friend. She's actually a, an award-winning Canadian folk artist who I said, hey, is it if I write these songs, can you actually make them better and turn them, you know, put music to it and, and help me with it. And she was like, yeah, she's like, that's been on my bucket list. I'd love to do that. So we collaborated and we wrote the songs that we thought would be fun for middle school students to sing that would be in their range. And we wrote a play that was something that they would be interested in. I asked my students, I said, what, what do you want? to act what do you want to do and it turns out that middle school kids love high school students and so we, I wrote a play about high school angst you know all the different things that high school students wrestle with self-esteem you know um issues of of not having enough money you know trying to make friends and um and it was it was fun it, it took us just a few months we actually recorded the songs into a um, CD and sold them. And we the play's actually been performed three times now. It was supposed to be performed a fourth time in Fitchburg actually, but with COVID and everything, it, it hasn't, it's been on hold right now. But I do, I have, I've published several short pieces. I've actually been a freelance writer for magazines and newspapers, um, writing fun things like about condominiums and you know, <laughs> PTO meetings. Um, but those are great experiences for writers because they help you to write on a deadline. They help you to learn how to write sentences where every word counts because there's word limits. Um, so I love that I wrote for magazines and newspapers and magazine writing can be great if you get a good gig because, you know, they pay well. I used to get paid almost $400 an article for a magazine article that took me, you know, like two, three hours to research and interview and write. So newspapers, not so great newspaper it's $25 for an article it's not even worth your gas you know to, to be able to, to write for the local paper so um I'm currently working as I said on a novel that's been about 14 years in the the work that's one I actually would love to finish sometime but I don't know if I will be able to there's a my husband's a history teacher and he does local history projects with his students and at one time, he found this court transcript from the Holden history 
society, historical society, about a slave girl named Anne who was brought to the North from the South right after Massachusetts decided that slaves who were brought here could apply for freedom. And so some neighbors helped her apply for her freedom and the woman who owned her sued the neighbors. And we have this lovely court transcript that the Holden Historical Society preserved about this court case. And when I read it, it was just fascinating to me because it, it just showed the myriad of thinking that people had at that time about slavery. And so the first draft, literally in 10 hours, I sat down and in 10 hours wrote a fictional account of the court case. But it didn't quite do what I wanted it to do. So then I rewrote it so that I could add more fictional information that I didn't have access to. My husband and I spent a couple of years finding research, but we just couldn't find any. You know, it was as if this was the only evidence of Anne's existence. But then after I did the second draft, I realized I had to kill off some of the real people because there was just too many characters. So then I had to do a third draft. <laughs> And then after, after that, I realized that I wanted to make it a story that middle school students could use and think about the issues of our day. And so then I had to do a fourth draft that would incorporate some of the things I wanted them to have discussion. And then now I've realized it needs to be intertwined with someone else's story that just staying in the past wouldn't work. So now the fifth and the sixth draft have been me rewriting and writing a second story. So I have this, um, it's a work in progress, but it's kind of a mystical spiritual piece where we have a modern day middle school African-American girl who has dreams. And the dreams that she has are all of these court case situations. And there's going to be a connection between her modern day story and issues that are happening in her life around race and the issues that were happening back in 1837. Um, and it's taken a lot of time to, to weave it together. I've had to have a lot of conversations with um, really good friends who are black because, you know, I, I wrestled with who am I as a half Asian, half white woman to write a story um, about a black person. But I, I've been getting a lot of help because I do think that, you know, I have this vision for this story. So, but it's, it's taking time. So this is why now it's 14 years later. And <laughs> I'm still working on it. This kind of segues into why did you want to be a writer? Was there someone who inspired you to want to do it or did you just always have it in you? No, actually books were my best friends when I was younger. I, um, I was born at a time when you didn't want to be half white and half Asian. You know, it was the Vietnam War. And here in the United States, people were not feeling very kindly towards anybody of Asian descent and I'm Korean and not Vietnamese but that didn't make a difference and so so I was in a strange place where white people were suspicious of me because I was half Asian and Asian people were suspicious of me because I was half white you know so, so there really wasn't a place that I could fit and so I I read a lot, you know, I, I, you know, hid in Anne of Green Gables land and um, Narnia and all these wonderful places where I could define who I wanted to be, you know, as I figured out, you know, how to navigate both sides of who I am, because I'm, I'm very Asian, and I'm also very American, you know, and, and I have, I had to figure out how to be me in the the 
myths of those two sometimes conflicting worlds and books were my friends that's where I, I learned about characters you know who stood up for themselves and people who made difficult decisions and people who loved and laughed and cried and you know and dealt with fears and so I just love stories and even now I think I don't think of myself actually um, as a writer, you know, we, we have to define ourselves. And so I'll say I'm a writer, but I think if push came to shove, what I'd say is I'm a storyteller, you know, that that's really, I tell stories and I tell stories all the time. I'm a teacher. I'm actually, I'm the language arts director at the Art of Problem Solving in Waltham and we do language arts courses. And I tell stories all the time to my students. You know, I, I tell stories from my life. I tell stories from the books that we're reading, you know, and, and even in my life with my kids, I always tell stories, you know, that have lessons, you know, when they need to learn something and conversations with friends. What do we do? We tell stories. And so I think as a storyteller, I wanted to be able to tell stories. And that's why I love theater because that's what, that's what theater is, you know, a play, a musical, it's, it's, it's a story. And so writing, I think, kind of followed from that, because how do I capture my stories? You know, I verbally tell them, but I also write them down. And so, you know, I have a whole collection of short stories that I've written that for my children, I've written poems when things have happened. I have a tendency to write in reaction to things. So like, one of my friends, when she lost the baby, you know, I wrote her a poem, you know, another friend when they, she found out she had cancer, you know, I wrote her um, a short story, you know, I write these things with the hopes of encouraging people, you know, giving them what stories gave to me, like stories gave me hope when I was growing up and was, you know, a gangly teenager trying to figure out, you know, my place in the world. And so I, I sort of see my writing as an opportunity to build people up to encourage them. And um, I'm actually an odd writer in that I don't have a lot of desires to be published because I have had opportunities that I haven't taken because I wanted my pieces to be more for the people who I wrote them for, you know, or, um, and not necessarily for publication for the, the whole world. So, um, so that's kind of, I see, my writing as a way of helping people, which is why Seven Bridge is a great fit for me because I love helping other writers to write better and to share their stories. And so it, it's kind of a natural fit for me to be, you know, running the day-to-day -day operations of it. Um, and so, and even, you know, with the, the drama directing is great because I'm helping others learn how to love theater and how to express themselves, so. I. I love that. And I, I guess additionally onto that question, do you have, I guess, as a storyteller, uh, do you have a specific goal or milestone you want to accomplish? Or you just kind of, do you like what you've done, I guess? Um, I think there are things I'd like to do, but most of the things I'd like to do are actually not things that have to do with what I'm currently doing. I'd love to be able to just travel. I'd love to take a year and just travel through Europe and write, write my way through Europe, you know, stay at a villa in Tuscany and finish my novel, you know, go to Paris and finish my poetry collection, you know, go to Scotland and, you know, like work on my short stories. Um, that would be a nice goal. But I, I think, you know, I've basically been contented in life. I've had many lives. I've done so many things. I've been a campus minister with a Christian organization working with college students for, um, I did that for seven years. I've been a teacher in public school, private school, and now with the art of problem solving. Um, I've been a drama director. I've been the president of seven different nonprofit organizations. Um, I've raised three, I have to say, wonderful children. So I'm a little bit biased, you know. Um, you know, I've been a part of our community 
life here in Lancaster for 20 years, um, helping the school districts, you know, helping with community efforts. Um, I think I'm, I'm pretty contented that I've done things that I've wanted to do. I've always had the, I've been blessed to be able to do the things that I want to do and not have to un Fortunately, as some folks be forced to do things that, you know, maybe you really don't want, like a nine to five job that's kind of drudgery for you. And I'm very grateful for that. Um, and so I, I think, yeah, I think the only goal maybe left is, is to travel a little bit, because unfortunately, raising three children, running organizations, working and doing the drama directing and seven bridge does not mean I get to travel. <laughs> so I haven't had a lot of jobs that have paid me a lot of money. I, I keep, as my husband always says, he's like, you got to stop giving all your services away for free. <laughs> my mom says the same thing to me too. She's like, what? You need to be getting paid for things. I was like, yeah, you're right. Because we're too nice, Paula. We're like, oh, you can help. I'll help you. That's fine. Yeah, exactly. And then you got to realize like, oh no, like we, we're worth something. We have value. So we should get paid for some things occasionally. Yeah. yeah, no, well, and we do have value and we are worth a lot. Um, and I think if people could pay us, they would. I think it's just we have a tendency to want to help the folks who don't have the kind of money that, that exactly. it takes. I actually, many years ago, I was offered a job in a business setting that would have paid a lot of money. But I just couldn't imagine myself working in that type of world, you know, where the privileged people got the benefit of what I had to offer at the detriment of the people who really needed what I had to offer. And so I turned down the job. I was like, sorry, it's not, not the right. <laughs> no, you're right. That's totally true too. I, 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 to, I could, I don't think I could end up doing like in the corporate world. Oh my goodness. I don't think I could handle that. Um, it's not my place, but I, yeah, you, you want to, at the end of the day, I think you're the same way is like, we just want to make a difference, right? Like we're, we're trying to write things and help people and no amount of like money can help a little bit, help us be able to do it. But I, I've always said, I don't need, I just want to be able to live comfortable. I don't need a big house. Like as long as I'm doing what I want to do, like, I think I'll be happy. I think you're doing what you want to do and you're happy. So that's what's important. No, and that's what I, yeah, I said. I have three children and, you know, that's what I've told them. I said, ultimately, I said, at the end of the day, when your life is over, have you done things that have made the world a little bit better? And by world, I don't mean the whole world, but like your little section of it, because I mean, it's, it'd be daunting to, you know, I'd love to be able to bring world peace to the whole world, but I can't do that. But what I can do is in my little community, foster community and foster networks and connect people. And, and that's what's been great with Seven Bridges. We've partnered with the school districts and we've encouraged students. We've done, um, before COVID, we did five years of an annual student poetry contest. And we would bring in published poets who would judge their work and they do an open mic and we'd collaborate. You know, we've brought in some programs in the high school. We've brought things in with the library the great you know you know you're talking about goal you know what the great sadness in my life is the woman who wrote the marvel um captain marvel graphic comics you know the movie that came out yes yes i'm a big marvel person so yes so yeah well i had actually arranged for her to come in march to the middle school in Lancaster. And then the week before she was supposed to come, they shut everything down for COVID. I cried for a week because she was actually, she was coming in very generously without charging us any fees and was going to be giving, you know, free copies of her books to the students. And the week before COVID hit and everything shut down and, and I had been working for months and months and months because she was going to come and not just talk about, you know, her self as, a, as a, a graphic illustrator and writer, but she was going to talk about being a woman in a man's world. 
And, you know, and for me as a woman, you know, I really, you know, I've raised my daughters to be strong, competent women, you know, to, to know that they can do anything in this world and they're not hindered by their um, biology. And she was going to come and talk about, you know, just what it's like and COVID hit. And so I'm still sad. You could tell I still have great regrets. <laughs> Wow. This has been great. Do you have anything else you want to touch on? Like, do you have social media or anything that you want to plug? Well, we have a website, sevenbridge.org. And as I said, you know, I would encourage people, if you have ever had a secret hidden desire to write and have thought, no, I can't be a writer. Yes, you can be a writer. And, um, and we can help you with that. So, and as I said, you know, the workshops are free. Um, the classes are very reasonably priced. Um, and we, we have a lot of fun. So we, we laugh a lot. We joke a lot. I've also told um, folks that during COVID, we are great therapy. I have had some of the best writing from my writers during this pandemic in our writing groups because people are just sharing all of the things that they're feeling and having all these aha moments through their writing um and and it's great and i always tell people our writing groups are like um las vegas what happens in vegas stays in vegas so what happens in our stay in our writing groups you know there's safe warm places where you can be yourself and and it's not just about writing we have a lot of folks who have come into our writing groups and realize that they want to do art or that they want to do theater or that they want to write math theorems you know <laughs> Like they've learned about themselves through the writing and have gone on to be creative in a cr completely different way. Like a lot of the folks who've started in our writing groups are now like artists selling art, which they never did before they started one of our writing groups. <laughs> so, you know. so you are making a difference basically. And yes. And I think therapy is right. I've always seen writing as like a therapeutic thing for me, but it, it's, it, you write the aha moments kick in and you're like, oh, this is what I could be doing. Like, oh, this is a story that actually should be told. Well, thank you guys for watching. This has been Book Talk and we will see you guys later.